This morning, brothers and sisters, as you know, we have the privilege of participating in communion together. And it is a wonderful thing to be able to do on Easter. It is certainly true that Jesus celebrated his uh, last supper with the disciples on earth on uh, Thursday, on Maundy Thursday, it is called. But to celebrate communion on Easter, to me, it joins together very clearly the reality of Christ's sacrifice and the reality of his victory. This is why we, we not only commemorate communion, we not only remember, we don't memorialize it, we, we celebrate communion. Because it is true, once again, that communion is something that is bitter and sweet. It is bitter, again, because we are reminded that Jesus, who loved us most of all, who loves us most of all, died for us because we caused him to die. It could have been us standing there with the crowd shouting out, crucify him, crucifying, crucify him, and indeed, in some ways, spiritually, it was us, we who were there, shouting out with the crowd. It was for our sins that he died. But part of the reason for that was that Jesus was willingly going to be sacrificed for us. He was creating for us a new covenant, and it is so appropriate that this new covenant takes place during the time of Passover for the Jewish people. For, of course, we remember that back in Exodus, when, when the Jewish people had become enslaved by the Egyptians, back at that time, Jesus, God sent a Savior to the people of Israel, Moses, who came and spread the good news of God among them. He was, at that time, God's representative. But there was another representative that was needed at that time, for eventually, as Moses shared the plagues with the people of Israel, and their hearts became more and more hardened, particularly the heart of Pharaoh, the plagues increased in their terrible nature. Until finally, finally, God said that he would take the firstborn son, of all of the Egyptians, but that he would pass by the children of the people of Israel. But he would only pass by them if they had taken the sacrificial lamb and slaughtered the lamb, cooked the lamb, spread the blood of the lamb on the door, and then, and then they would be saved. Jesus, at this Passover, tells his disciples that he is the Passover lamb. Because we are told in the scriptures that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all deserve to die according to God's righteous standard. Not because we're so much worse than everybody else, but because we're precisely as bad as as everybody else. All of us have sinned. Let us join in with the disciples and hear the story of the Last Supper as recorded in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, starting at verse 14. When the hour came, Jesus and his, his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, 
Take this and divide it among you, for I tell you that I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on this table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. A dispute arose among them as to which of them was considered to be greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest... You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my Father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Jesus went on and turned to Simon and said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he, that is Simon, replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. And Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me. You will deny three times that you know me. Then Jesus asked them, When I sent you out without purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing, they answered. He said to them, But now, if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag, and if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. It is written, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And I tell you that this must be filled, fulfilled in me. Yes, that what is written about me is reaching its fulfillment. The disciples said, See, Lord, here are two swords. That's enough, he replied. We don't often read the full story of the, the Last Supper from the Gospel of Luke together at one sitting, but we can see in that time that Jesus had this deep hope and desire uh, about what this Last Supper would be like, but that it is, it is touched by the stress and the worry and the, the pettiness of the apostles. And so we see that in this Last Supper, we are invited to the table, even, even in our sinfulness. Jesus does not turn away his sinful and petty apostles. In fact, he himself serves Judas, the one who would betray him, right along with all the others. And no, you don't need to be perfect to eat and drink of this feast. We do caution you, our Lord cautions you, not to eat and drink unworthily. Take the feast seriously as a significant celebration. Now, if you have your elements ready, um, I, would, uh, I would invite you to join with me. And if you don't, I invite you to just pause for a moment and go and get those if you have them. 
uh, and join back here and uh, resume again. Take, eat, remember, and believe that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. Now, brothers and sisters, take, drink, remember, and believe that the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was poured out for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. As the Osterhof boys read for us, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. <laughs>